Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In unit three, last class, we finished off Simpson's rule one and two, right? Right, we finished Simpson's rules one and two, right? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So today we'll be starting off with uh, dynamical stability. Okay. Now before going into dynamical stability, I hope I've already told you in the last class to discuss on or to revise on uh, statical stability, right? Because once we have this basic right, then only I can go into dynamical stability. Can somebody explain what is statical stability? Statical stability. Fine. No, none of you must have revised it. No point in asking you guys. Okay. Because before going into dynamical stability, I want you to refresh on statical stability because you will be will be using these uh, GZ curves, uh, writing moments, and all those in our upcoming lectures okay now transfer statical stability is a term used to describe the ability of a ship okay ability of a ship to return to the upright when it has been forcefully healed by an external force and is momentarily at rest when floating in still water okay so for the vessel for for vessel to be in transfer statical stability the vessel has to be first at rest and has to be in still water and at that time, when you apply a force, okay, or when it has been forcibly healed by an external force, external force like winds and waves, the ability of a vessel to return to its upright position, that is what we describe by transverse statical stability. Okay. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay, so what is writing lever, GZ? What do you understand by writing lever? So horizontal distance. Yeah, okay. Horizontal distance between. Between what man? So it looks like none of you have revised it. And uh, you between center of gravity and uh, buoyancy force. Okay, so when does your writing lever occur? Ship healed. Or... When the ship is healed. Yeah, when the ship is healed. Heal. Okay, now writing lever is defined as the horizontal distance. What happens now? Normally, when your vessel is upright, your G and B will be in same line. But once your vessel starts healing, okay, your center of buoyancy and center of gravity gets shifted or there is a horizontal distance created between G and B. Okay, So that horizontal separation we refer to as GZ, which is the writing lever. Okay, now what is the formula for writing moments? Formula for writing moments. GZ into displacement. Right. You want me to continue? Yes, you want me to continue the class or stop here? Uh, 
Continue. Continue. So. And at least I need some response from you guys, man. I told you to study on the basics, but none of you have gone through it. Fine. So, how do you plot a GZ curve? Because all these are basics. Because with these basics only, I can go ahead with dynamical stability and other criteria for uh, cargo ships. How do you plot a GZ curve? Have you done plotting a GZ curve? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We use the. We'll find the GZ. And then between GZ and what? What values? Angle of phi. Thank you. Okay, between GZ and angle of phi. Okay, fine. But how do you find the GZ values? Uh, GZ plus GZ sine theta. What? GZ is equal to GZ sine theta. No, no, no. If you will remember it, okay. You find G is it equal to K n minus K G sine theta. You've done this, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So K n values you get it from your hydrostatic particulars. Okay, K G value will be given to you. So with these you equate and get out G Z values for various angle of field. Sine theta theta will vary from ten degrees to from zero to eighty degrees. So you'll use that and find out the G Z values. Plot it between GZ and angle of field and get the GZ curve. Your GZ curve is also called as the curve of statical stability. Understood? I'm not. I'm just brushing up on your basics. I'm not going very deep into it because this all these things, all these things you are supposed to know. Okay. Understood? Yes, sir. Fine. So let's discuss on dynamical stability. Statical stability, I already discussed you the ability of a vessel to compact to its upright position when it is forcibly heeled to a when it's by external forces. But whereas dynamical stability of a ship at a, at any particular angle of inclination may be defined as the work required work required by the external forces such as winds and waves. To heal the ship to that angle of heat. Okay. Now, what is the difference? What you find here between dynamical and statical? Is what is the difference? Don't know. No idea, so you can at least tell me with the definition, right? In definition itself, I told you the ability of the vessel to come back to its upright position is statical. Whereas here in dynamical stability, it is the work required. Okay, work required by external forces to heal the ship to that angle of heel, to any angle of heel. Yeah, supposing I'm uh, pushing a vessel or uh, trying to heal a vessel, the amount of work which I require okay, to heal the vessel to a particular angle. Instead of me pushing, it is done by the external forces such as winds and waves. So here we will be calculating how much of work is required. But there it is something like the ability to come back to its upright position. It is not continuously healing. Here it is continuously healing due to external forces. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. So here, uh, in statical stability, we used a GZ curve. Okay, to understand it. But here, in dynamical stability, we'll be considering, or it would be more appropriate to consider the curve of writing moments. We would be taking a writing moment curve and understanding the dynamical stability. Okay, to find out writing moments, writing moments is GZ into displacement. 
So we know the GZ values multiplied by displacement, you get the writing moments. So we'll be plotting a graph between angle of heel and writing moments. Okay, so once we plot this graph, with this we will be knowing the dynamical stability. Okay. So now let's take an example. Now the dynamical stability can now be you know, much, be more readily appreciated. Now let's take an example that a ship is inclined by external forces to an angle of heel of 25 degree. Okay, now... Now this is a graph where your x-axis is your angle of heel from 0 to 80 and your y-axis is your writing moments. Okay. Now in order for the external forces to achieve this, to achieve this means to achieve an angle of 25 degree. Now it is necessary that they have to overcome the sum of all the writing moments. Okay. So uh, your vessel is healed up to 25 degrees. I drop a vertical here. Now from 0 to 25, this area is the amount of work done. Or this is the dynamical stability. Okay. So now if you want to calculate the work done, it is basically, if I draw horizontal here, it is up to here somewhere up to 3,500. So it is the sum of the moments from 0 to 3,500. All the sum of all the writing moments will give you the dynamical stability. So it is basically the area under writing movement curve. Area under writing movement curve up to an angle of heel of 25 degree. Okay. Understood this graph? Yes, sir. Okay. So now it is clear that dynamical stability is determined by the concentration of the area. Means it is the area under the writing moment curve from 0 to Q degree, Q degree or whatever it is mentioned. Okay. Unit is tons meter radians. Okay. We know the formula for GZ is writing moment by displacement. So with that our dynamical stability in terms of ton meter radians will be displacement into area under GZ curve. 0 to 30 degree area under gz curve is this area now how do you find the area under gz curve how do you find this area if i want to find out this area how do i find out this area How do you find the area of that one? No, no. So Simpson's rule? Yeah, exactly. Good Simpson's rule. I don't know whether you said it confidently or with a doubt. Right. We already discussed the Simpson's rule, Simpson's rule 1 and 2. We will be using the same procedure to calculate the area under the GZ curve. So that is why Simpson's rules have been designed because to find out when you have a curve structure and a line. So with this, I can find out the area under a GZ curve. So once I find out the area multiplied by displacement will give me my dynamical stability in tons meter radians. Okay, understood? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> And I've just given you some uh, basic distinctions between uh, transfer statical stability and dynamical stability. Okay. So transfer statical, as we discuss, it is the ability to return to its upright position, whereas dynamic is the work done required by external forces to to a particular angle of heel. Now this is applicable when the ship is momentarily at rest when floating in still water. 
Now this is applicable when for all angles of inclination. Now this is created by horizontal separation between center of buoyancy and center of gravity. Whereas this is created by external forces in healing a vessel. What happens during healing is creates writing moments as the vessel heats. As your vessel is healing, okay, your GZ curve is, uh, will increase. Now, as your GZ curve increases, obviously, when you multiply it with displacement, your writing moments is going to increase. Now, here, external forces have to overcome all the writing moments. Okay, because whatever the writing moments are, they have to overcome to make it. To heal. Now here in this case, GZ will increase and then decrease. Means it is going to form a graph. But here, what happens as you keep on, uh, as the external forces keeps on increasing, the vessel is vessel will continue to increase in angle of field until a angle of vanishing stability. Angle of vanishing stability is when something called as capsizing okay it reaches a peak value after that there is no movement and your vessel starts capsizing formula for writing moment is gz into displacement for dynamical it is displacement into area under gz curve up to whatever degree from zero to theta degree or whatever degree is given to you Okay, so these are your basic differences between static and dynamical. Understood? Yes, sir. Fine. So with that, we finished dynamical stability. Okay. It was just a, uh, why we wanted to discuss this. We, after that, we will be discussing the criteria on minimum intact stability criteria for cargo ships. Okay. So in those intact, uh, intact stability criteria, we will be discussing on the GZ curve. All those criteria will be based on the GZ curve. Chapter 3 of Code on Intact Stability will give you all those criteria for a cargo ship. Okay, now let's discuss on a discuss on the criteria. Before going into the criteria, you should know the GZ curve. I already said your GZ curve is plotted between your angle of heel. and your gz values now how do you obtain your gz values how do you get your gz values k minus kg sin theta sir yeah k n minus kg sin theta okay now k n values Okay, so your GZ values is Kn minus Kg sin theta. Okay, so normally your Kn values, you can obtain it from your hydrostatic tables for each angle of heel from 10 to 80 degrees at an interval of 10 degrees, Kn values are already given to you, are already given to you in the hydrostatic particulars. You don't have to calculate it. But once you get your Kn value, Kg value is already given to you in the problem. You can find out the values of GZ which is kn minus kg sin theta. Theta will be the angle of heel. Okay, so with this, you get your gz value. Okay, so once you obtain your gz value, you can plot it on the graph and get your gz curve. Okay, 
Okay, so this is how you do your fine. So let's now discuss on the criteria. So as I said, we will be taking a GZ curve. So the area under the writing lever GZ curve okay, should not be less than 0 0.055 meter radians up to 30 degree angle of heat. Okay. So now here we are taking from so the from 0 to 30 degree. From 0 to 30 degree. At 30 degree, if I drop a vertical here, the area from 0 to 30 degree under the curve, under this GZ curve. When I calculate the area using the Simpson rule, the area should not be less than 0 0.055 meter radians. Okay, criteria. We'll be doing a problem based on this, where you actually will be calculating the areas and finally seeing whether the, all the criteria are complied or not. Okay, so basically, we are first seeing the criteria. Towards the end, we will be doing a problem. And next one is next criteria is and not less than 0 0.09 meter radians up to 40 degree or the angle of down flooding QF if the angle is less than 40 degree. Okay. So not less than 0 0.09 meter radians up to 40 degree. So if I take an area up to from 0 to 40, from 0 to 40 at 40 degrees angle of field, I drop a vertical. So if I calculate the area from 0 to 40 degree, this area should not be less than 0 0.09 meter radian. So this is your second criteria. Okay. Now here it is mentioned as up to 40 degree or the angle of down flooding QF. I'll explain you towards the end what is angle of down flooding. Okay. So for the time being, it is from 0 to 40, your value has to be 0 0.09, not less than 0 0.09. Now, additionally, the area under the writing lever curve between the angles of field 30 and 40 degrees should not be less than 0 0.03 meter radian. So now, between 30 degree, between 30 and between 40. So this area, green section area, if I find out the area, this area should not be less than 0 0.03 meter radian. So this is my third requirement. Okay. So these are basically the area requirements under the GZ curve, which you will be actually doing it once you have finished loading or finish uh, making your loading plan. You will calculate all these areas, then see whether it complies with, with those minimum criteria. Okay. And any doubts on this areas? No, sir. Okay. So first it is from 0 to 30. Next one is from 0 to 40. And the third criteria is from between 30 and 40. Okay. The next criteria is the writing lever GZ should be at least 0 0.20 meters at an angle of heel equal to or greater than 30 degree. Okay, so your writing lever GZ value has given they have given to you as 0 0.20 meters, but again, this 0 0.20 meters has to be at an angle of field equal to or greater than 30 degrees, so it should be at least 30 degrees. So, to find out that value, what I do, we go to the graph at 30 degree, you drop a vertical, and from there, you try to find out the value of GZ. So, here GZ values will be given to you at each interval. So when you find out the GZ value, it has to be minimum of 0.2 meters. Okay, at 30 degree, you have to measure the GZ at least 0.2 meters at 30 degree or greater. Okay, so you're measuring at 30 degree angle of line. When you measure that, it has to be 0.2 meters. Okay. 
So the next criteria is the maximum the maximum writing arm should occur at an angle of field preferably exceeding 30 degree but not less than 25 degrees. Now what do you understand by maximum writing arm? Maximum writing arm. No idea. No idea, sir. Okay. So it's basically your GZ curve. Your GZ curve, or you call as the writing arm curve. What happens? It goes up, reaches a maximum value, then starts coming down so you need to see the maximum writing arm should occur at an angle so here we have seen that the maximum writing arm attains a peak value somewhere here this is your peak value of the curve that should occur at an angle of heel preferably exceeding 30 degree so here here it is occurring at this point from here if you drop a vertical you have to see at which angle it is occurring here it is preferably it is occurring somewhere at 43 so that is the requirement. So the max peak has to occur. It should be more than 30 degree, but not less than 25 degree. So here at our point, it is occurring at 43. Supposing, let's say, if this is my graph, If this is my graph, my peak value is occurring here, right? This was my earlier graph. It is occurring at 43. But in this graph, my peak value is occurring at 30 degree. Still, this is acceptable. OK, still 30 degree is acceptable. Preferably exceeding 30 degree. So at till 30 degree or above 30 degree is acceptable, but not less than 25 degree but not less than 25 degree means suppose your peak value occurs somewhere here. This is your graph. Now you see if I take my peak value, it is occurring somewhere at 20 degrees. This is not acceptable because it should not go below 25 degree. Preferably exceeding 30 degree, but not less than 25 degree. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So then we come to the last. Uh... <clears throat> Requirement is the initial metacentric height, GM. Should not be less than 0.15 meters. Okay, so your minimum GM value should not be less than 0.15 meters. Okay, so this is your final requirement. Okay. So we had area requirements between 0 to 30, 30 to 40, and between 30 and 40. Then we had a writing lever GZ requirements 0.2 meters, but this 0.2 meters should occur at 30 degrees or more. Then your maximum writing arm should occur, preferably exceeding 30 degrees, and your initial metacentric height GM should not be less than 0.15 meters. So now these are some of the criteria, general criteria for cargo ships, which is prescribed by IMO. Okay. So any doubts on this criteria? <clears throat> yes, sir. Fine. Now here I have discussed uh, 
I told you like uh, when we were discussing the second one, not less than 0 0.09 meter radians up to 40 degree or the angle of down flooding. I told you, I'll explain you what is the angle of down flooding QF towards the end. Okay. Now, any thoughts on it? What do you understand by angle of down flooding? Now, angle of down flooding, let me give you the definition, then I'll explain you. QF is an angle of heel at which openings in the hull, superstructure, or deck houses, which cannot be closed to weather tight, immerse. Okay. To explain you angle of down flooding, uh, what do you understand by deck edge immersion? Deckage immersion. What is a deckage? Sorry. Can you repeat? Now this is your ship. This is your deckage, right? Edge of your deck, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so now what happens? Like now, let's say now your vessel is initially upright and your deckage is somewhere here, and this is your water line. Okay, your ship is floating. Now, what happens? Your vessel starts healing. Okay, all these criteria are given to you for vessel healing. Okay, now when your vessel starts healing, now this is your deckage and this is your water line. Because as it starts healing at a particular angle of hill, finally your deckage is going to touch the water line. Okay, now let's say at this position, it, your deckage is started uh, touching the water line. So when it touches the water line, obviously your water is going to start entering into your deck. And all your openings will start get filling in, right? You able to follow what I'm saying? Yes, understood up to this. What is a deckage immersion? Yes, sir. Okay. So your vessel is initially upright and your water level is here. This is my deckage. My vessel starts healing. So my vessel starts healing and at a particular angle of field, obviously when it continues to keep on healing at, at one point definitely my deckage is going to touch the water line okay when it starts touching the water line obviously my water is going to come into the deck okay so qf is that angle of heel at which openings in the hull now all openings in the hull or super structures starts immersing when your deckage starts touching the water line once it starts touching then it immerses then slowly water starts coming inside Okay, so QF is that angle. Now this angle, whether it is 40 degree or less, it depends on ships. Now supposing this is a bulk carrier or a tanker. Now this has a very less freeboard. Okay, when you have a very, very less freeboard, what happens? Before achieving 40 degree, before the vessel coming to 45 degree, maybe at 30 degrees or 35 degree itself, your deckage might touch the water line. Right, so in that case, maybe at 35 degree itself, your water will start coming inside the deck and filling all the openings. So in that case, your 35 degree will be your maximum value or whichever is less, 40 degree or 35 degree. In our case, since it's at 35 degree itself, QF starts filling. So we will take this value, not 40 degree. But whereas when you have high freeboard vessels, high freeboard vessels like let's say car carriers okay where even up to even when you come up to 40 degree angle of heel still your deckage won't immerse maybe it will start immersing at 50 degrees because you have a very high freeboard so your water will start coming only at 50 degrees so in that case you won't take 50 degree you will take 40 okay so you will take whichever value is there is it is either 40 okay or angle of down flooding whichever is the lesser value 
you will be taking that uh, that value okay supposing it's a bulk carrier or tanker if it is less than 40 you will take that value with vessels higher than free bow higher free bow maybe you will take the 40 degree value okay so that is what you understand by angle of down flooding understood yes sir okay now in applying this criteria small openings through which progressive flooding cannot take place need not be considered as open okay now what do you understand by this in applying this small openings through which progressive flooding cannot take place what do you understand by progressive flooding No idea what is progressive flooding. So the flooding prog progress to small openings. Sorry, can you can you repeat? So the flooding progress to small openings, sir. It keep flooding, sir. Okay, fine. It. it keeps on flooding see what happens in applying this criteria is normally as your deckage starts emerging at your angle of down flooding your water starts getting into your deck compartments now once it starts getting your deck compartments all the openings in the hull structures starts get you know it starts filling it up it starts get filling in okay once all those openings fills up okay now certain openings it may not lead to progressive flooding it may not lead to flooding into the other compartment it would it will stop there itself but whereas some openings once it gets filled in you have a progressive flooding into the next compartment which is what has to be taken into account so openings which does not have this progressive flooding you know need not consider it as a criteria means you no need to take those openings okay because that will not be a problem for us okay only where you have progressive flooding compartments those factors those compartments have to be taken into account okay understood any doubts in this yes, sir no sir correct sir and so 